Hello, my name is Trevor Crane. I'm a design engineer at Linear Technology. I'll explain the challenges of powering the USB V-Bus in a car and how the LT8697 meets these challenges. USB sockets appear in an increasing number of car models as portable devices become ubiquitous. The USB interface delivers power to portable devices via the 5 volt V-Bus and ground lines. Depending on the USB version and the portable device, the V-Bus sources up to 2.1 amps. In a car, this high V-Bus current presents a challenge. Car electronics, including the V-Bus regulator, often reside behind the dash, while the USB sockets may be placed in the back seat. The cabling between the V-Bus regulator and the socket can be several meters in length. Long cables mean high resistance, so the 5-volt V-Bus supply drops out at the socket at high USB device current. This cable resistance is a real problem. At a V-Bus voltage of 4.75 volts at the USB socket, an iPad cannot draw its full 2.1 amps of current. It discharges this battery while operating, even when plugged in. Existing solutions to this V-Bus cable resistance problem typically employ a topology such as this. A regulator takes the automotive battery voltage at its input and steps down to 5 volts. Another IC manipulates the regulator to increase the output voltage at high load current, giving the regulator negative output resistance to compensate for the cable resistance. A V-Bus switch provides additional features like output current limit. This solution works well, but takes up to three ICs. The LT8697 integrates these three functions into one IC. It is a full-featured automotive step-down regulator with 2.5 amps of output current. Integrated cable drop compensation eliminates resistive drops due to cable resistance. The transfer function is easily programmable with a resistor to ground, but the cable resistance must be known. Output current limit, output current monitor, and a PG flag cover many of the features offered by USB switches. Here, we can see cable drop compensation in action. On this DC load line plot, we can see the LT8697 regulate across four meters of twisted pair cable with about 260 milliohms of resistance. The LT8697 increases its local output voltage at higher load current, giving a flat load line at the remote point of load despite the long cable. On this transient response plot, we can see that cable drop compensation is also fast. Here, the output responds to a 500 milliamp load step with a 25 milliamp per microsecond step rate and settles within 50 microseconds. Now I would like to demonstrate cable drop compensation in action. First, the LT8697 will power a tablet computer through the USB V-Bus without extra cabling and without cable drop compensation. Here, the LT8697 demo circuit and a tablet computer are only separated by a short USB cable. On the scope, we can see the VBUS current waveform as I plug the tablet in. The current waveform steps up to the full two amps of charge current for this device. A DVM here shows about 5.1 volts is delivered on the VBUS at the USB socket. Second, I have added four meters of 20 gauge twisted pair cable in series between the LT8697 regulator and the tablet computer, with cable drop compensation still disabled. This cabling has 260 milliohms of resistance. I will superimpose the second VBUS current waveform onto the first. We can see that the second waveform only steps up to 1.5 amps of charge current. The DVM shows that about 4.6 volts is delivered to the VBUS at the USB socket. The cable resistance has caused the V-Bus to drop out at high current, and consequently, the full charge current is not delivered to the tablet. Last, I kept the 4 meters of cabling and swapped to an LT8697 demo board with cable drop compensation enabled. We can see that the V-Bus current waveform returns to the original case with 2 amps of charge current delivered. The DVF shows that about 5 volts is delivered to the V-Bus at the USB socket, despite the long cable. So, 
cable drop compensation works. Automotive environments present a whole set of challenges to regulating the USB VBUS besides resistance from long cables. Using a switching frequency above the 1.8 MHz top end of the AM band can minimize noise in the car radio. The LT8697 has very low min on and off times. This high speed operation allows the regulator to switch at 2 MHz over a wide VIN range of 8 volts to 35 volts. Additionally, force continuous mode allows the LT8697 to operate at full frequency even at zero load. Another challenge for regulators operating in cars is that the input voltage can vary down to 6 volts in the warm crank startup condition and can spike high during the load dump fault condition. The LT8697 is robust to this input voltage variation with a wide input voltage range of 6 volts to 42 volts. Automakers demand robust ICs when nodes are routed off the PCB onto long cables. Ideally, any node tied to a cable should survive a short to ground or to the auto battery. The LT8697 has accurate and programmable output current limit that both makes the IC survive a short to ground and limits power dissipation at the point of fault. All pins tied to the LT8697's output have ABS max ratings of at least 30 volts, so the LT8697 can survive an output short to battery. To prevent damage to portable devices in the event of a fault in the regulator, some specs require that the maximum output voltage be limited separately from the regulation loop. The typical way to test for this is to short the feedback pin to ground and monitor the output voltage. Most regulators fail this test and the output voltage climbs to the input voltage. This can destroy whatever is connected to the USB socket. However, the LT8697 has a dual input feedback feature on the sys pin that limits the output voltage to less than 6 volts, even when the primary feedback pin, USB 5V, is shorted to ground. The LT8697 provides a robust and feature-rich solution to power USB VBUS in cars. Visit us at Linear.com for more information. Thank you.